Well, welcome to this talk Thursday the 16th of May. Now, this is the paper I want to look at today. Uh, this is Fatal Post-COVID mRNA Vaccine-Associated Cerebral Ischemia. Cerebral, of course, is to do with the, uh, the brain. Uh, ischemia is lack of blood supply. And fatal uh, means, uh, I think you probably know what fatal means. This could not be a uh, more serious uh, report. So let's look at it and be careful and we'll give you the information from the report and you can think, say, what, decide what, what you think it means. Now, um, we'll, look off, we'll start off with a few pictures first of all. So this is from uh, the, uh, this journal here, the, uh, the Neuro Hospitalist. So to do with neurology and things like that. Now, this is the article here. Uh, fatal post-COVID mRNA vaccine-associated cerebral ischemia. Now, this was the brain scan. Now, I apologise for the resolution. It's all we've got from the uh, from the PDF. But that was the relatively normal-ish. I think there is some changes in it, but you can't really see it, this resolution brain scan there. But then this patient, this was it uh, eight days later. And you can see that this whole part of the brain doesn't look right uh, uh, at all. So that was just within an eight-day period. There's another one there. This top scan was on admission, and this one was after an eight-day period in a very pathological-looking scan. For example, you can see a bit of ventricle there, but not on the or not on the other side. Um, now, this was uh, one of the blood vessels, I think, in what you call the leptomeninges. Uh, so the leptomeninges are the um, the uh, well, the meninges are in three layers: the dura mater, arachnoid mater, and pia mater, surrounding the brain and the spinal cord. And the leptomeninges are the two inner ones: the arachnoid mater and the pia mater. And this, this is the blood vessel here. Now, again, the resolution is not uh, brilliant, but what we're seeing is lots of white cells, lymphocytes. I think these were around about the blood vessel, so um, quite abnormal uh, situation. And, and here, th this is a blood vessel here, and here we see organising blockage. So that's the wall of the blood vessel, and then we, all this bit in the middle is, uh, is the, uh, the organised uh, occlusion of the blood vessel that shouldn't, um, shouldn't be there. So really quite, really quite significant uh, pathology that we're looking at there. Now let's get down to the details, and uh, where, there we are. Um, so key words here, COVID-19, Moderna vaccine. This is the Moderna vaccine we're talking about here. Uh, cerebral edema. Edema is uh, fluid and swelling. Uh, neurology, study of the ner disease of the nervous system. And stroke, of course, part of the brain being uh, cut off from its blood supply. Now, this is the full reference here. Uh, that the authors like us to put in. So we'll put it there. Department of Neurology, Harvard uh, Medical School. Uh, Boston. So uh, part of the Harvard uh, Medical School group. Good that they're reporting on this. Now, background. Venous thrombosis have been linked to several COVID vaccines, as we know. So that's not really new. Uh, but here we describe a case of post-Moderna COVID-19 vaccine, arterial infarct. So arterial infarct. So the arteries take blood to a particular part of the body so that would be an artery there and that's the part of the body they're taking the blood to if there's a blockage here like a blood clot there then the infarct is this area cut off from this blood supply that would be the infarct and of course if that's the brain that's going to be a stroke uh, with vaccine associated cortical uh, diffuse cortical edema in other words there was a edema that was in many different parts it's diffuse cortical edema throughout the brain swelling throughout the brain that was complicated by refractory intracranial hypertension. So uh, intracranial means within the bones of the skull, intracranial. And hypertension means the blood pressure, that the pressure there is too high. So there's, there's high pressure inside the cranial cavity. So the cerebrospinal fluid inside the cranial cavity, that's supposed to have a particular pressure. If that's too high, that is a cranial uh, hypertension, high, blood, high um, fluid pressure inside the brain. And refractory means it didn't respond to any treatment. And they tried everything, all the medical treatments they tried, uh, and they didn't work. So they couldn't get the um, high blood pressure, or the high pressure rather, in the brain down. Um, 
case summary, 24 hours after receiving her first dose of the Moderna vaccine, 30-year-old woman developed severe headache. Uh, three weeks later, she was submitted with subacute uh, headache and confusion. So headache maybe not quite as severe, but she became confused. Um, imaging initially showed uh, scattered cortical thrombosis. That was the first one we saw. So brain supply, lots of little blood clots in the vessels supplying the brain with an elevated opening pressure on lumbar puncture. So when they did a lumbar pump, so what happens here is the... Um, the uh, where have we gone? The, the cerebrospinal fluid goes round about the brain and it goes down the spinal cord as well. So when you do a lumbar puncture, if the cerebrospinal fluid's at high pressure, there's a higher pressure down in the spine as well from the cerebrospinal fluid. It's called cerebrospinal because it goes around the cerebrum and round the uh, part of the spinal cord as well. Um, and uh, an external ventricular drain was placed. So the ventricles there, these are the fluid field gaps in the brain. They put a drain in there. But again, that didn't uh, work as well as they'd want it to. But she continued to have elevated intracranial pressure. So the pressure stayed high. Ultimately, she required a hemicraniotomy. So otomy means opening into. Hemi means half. Uh, and the cranium is the bones of the skull. So it sounds like what they did here was they actually, uh, to try and get the pressure down, they actually took away some of the side of the bone of the skull to try and get the pressure down. Pretty drastic, pretty drastic stuff, but sadly to uh, no uh, avail, unfortunately. Pathology was consistent with thrombosis and associated inflammatory response. The conclusion. Um... Through correlation, uh, her, her medical team surmised that mRNA vaccine may have contributed to this presentation. So is this just coincidence? But her medical team surmised, they're being very cautious here, that the mRNA vaccine may have contributed to this presentation. Uh, from what I've said, let me know what you think. So it may have contributed towards it. Might have just been an appalling coincidence. The side effects of COVID-19 uh, infection and vaccination are still completely understood. That's true. Uh, though complications are rare, clinicians should be aware of presentations like this one, they say. Um, rare, of course, is a somewhat relative term. Now, a bit more information for those that want it. Uh, this patient uh, had a uh, prior asymptomatic COVID-19 infection three months earlier. So if she'd had infection three months earlier, you and me might think she had high levels of natural immunity. and vaccine would no longer be indicated, especially that she was a young woman. But the vaccine was given anyway. And this is a big part of the problem here. These are, these are group protocols. Everyone's given the same treatment in this case the vaccine, um, regardless of looking at the individual. Now, I, 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 I think that there should be a ban on all vaccines until we know uh, with much more certainty their effects and uh, adverse reactions. But even if you don't go that far, then surely we should be giving these vaccines on an individualised, bespoke basis, not for everyone. Because this person had just had the infection, just had the infection. Therefore would probably have high levels of natural immunity. Right, 24 hours after the first dose of the mRNA COVID vaccine, Moderna developed severe uh, atypical throbbing bifrontal headache. So an unusual throbbing head uh, pain over the front of her head, bifrontal, but, but, but left and right side. Headaches were atypical. She hadn't had headaches in the past, so this was new. Uh, if it was not the vaccine, it was a very unfortunate coincidence. 24 hours 24 hours after first dose of the mRNA COVID-19 vaccine Moderna. 24 hours after. Might be nothing to do with it, of course. But it, that was the temporal correlation. Three weeks after vaccination, developed blurred vision and confusion. Again, bifrontal headache with photophobia, so fear of the light. The light was irritating her. 
Lumbar puncture re punctures revealed lots of lymphocytes, lymphocytosis. So lots of lymphocytes, as we saw on the um, on the pathology slide. On uh, on that one, I think they were lymphocytes there, around about the uh, around about the blood vessel. Two of the meninges. Um, and of course, we would assume that that sample was obtained obtained uh, afterwards. Broad spectrum antimicrobial cover was started, so just in case it was infection, gave a lots of broad spectrum antibiotics, didn't help. Uh, her mental state actually worsened later that evening. It actually got worse. Left hemiparesis, so uh, weakness down the left side of the body, indicating, of course, the right side of the brain was uh, affected. One of the weird things is it's the... Uh, so the left side of the body is paralysed, it's the right side of the brain that's affected, which appears to be the situation in this woman's uh, case. Elevated D-dimer showing that she had blood clots, that's a standard test. Um, CSF, cerebrospinal fluid culture and PCR testing returned negative, so it looks like there wasn't an active infection. This is an immunological reaction by the looks of it. There wasn't an active infection. Intracranial pressure remained refractory to maximal medical management. In other words, they just couldn't get it down. Refractory, the treatments were not working. They tried deep sedation, they tried paralysis, they tried hypothermia, none of it worked. Uh, prompting a right decompressive hemicraniotomy, as we said, pretty drastic thing. I'm pretty sure that will mean removal of part of the, the uh, bones on the side of the skull. The patient expired from refractory cerebral edema. They could not treat the accumulation of fluid around the brain, in and around the brain. Brain autopsy showed infiltrates of uh, lymphocytes CD8 and CD4. So these are the T helper cells. Uh, they're the CD4 and these are other lymphocytes here, the CD8s. I think those are the cytotoxic cells, I think. Um, Anyway, the lymphocytes that shouldn't be there. In association with intravascular thrombi, so in the blood vessels, blood clots inside the vessels. Fungi and bacterial strains were negative, so they eliminated that form of infection. Diffuse endothelial damage and vessel wall inflammation. So diffuse means all over the place. Endothelial, that's the lining of the blood vessels, damage and vessel wall inflammation. So damage to the uh, inside of the blood vessels and vessel wall inflammation so the lining and the walls of the vessels both with uh, inflammatory changes suggesting an uh, underlying prothrombotic state and t-cell inflammatory response prothrombotic state more likely to get the blood clots t-cell t-cells inducing the inflammatory response by the looks of that the arterial infarct in this case is likely to be related to a prothrombotic state, likelihood of making blood clots. Due to the large volume of infarction, it was a huge area of the brain affected as we saw, the patient was not started on anticoagulation after extensive discussion of the risks versus potential benefits. So in strokes, of course, in the early stages, you often give uh, anticoagulants to increase the blood flow through the brain. But if, if a stroke is established, so if this part of the brain is blocked off from its blood supply, then that part of the brain will start to die. But of course, the blood vessels will start to die as well because there, there's no blood su supply going through the brain. So that means if you give anticoagulants, the blood could start flowing through damaged blood vessels and it would just leak out into the brain, causing potentially catastrophic cerebral hemorrhage, which is why they decided against, presumably, why they decided against uh, anticoagulation. In summary, administration of COVID-19 vaccine was considered a possible cause, possible cause of the extensive multifocal arterial thromboses with associated inflammatory response and elevated intracranial pressure given the temporal association within 24 hours. The uh, mechanism for uh, Initial elevation in intracranial pressure is not known, but may be related to cerebral autoregulatory changes in the setting of cortical microvascular thrombosis. 
In, in other words, um, what, what the saying is here, they don't know quite why the, uh, the pressure inside the brain was high, the initial elevation in intracranial pressure, but may be related to cerebral autoregulatory changes. So normally there's an autoregulation, the brain regulates its own blood supply. And if the, uh, if the blood vessels were damaged, if there's changes uh, in the settings of the cortical small blood vessels, due to uh, uh, thrombosis, then the brain couldn't all regulate its own blood supply, I think is all that means. So uh, it looked like a bit of a downward spiral. Now, um, just close with a few words from Dr. Peter McCullough from his substack, which I'll put the link to there. Uh, suspected uh, un unexpected serial adverse reactions such as this would have put a pause on the entire study and an investigation into why this happened and a call for risk mitigation measures to prevent the same complication from happening to more subjects had it been in a clinical trial. So are we prepared to put up with more adverse reactions now that these things are kind of been more widely released than we were in the clinical trials? Seems a bit strange. The reason I find this so concerning is that the Moderna, happens to be Moderna, mRNA vaccines. There's plans to produce them on, on a hu huge scale. Uh, Oxford Harwell Science Park, new factory being built. I don't know what stage it's at, but I believe it's under construction now. Going to make 250 million doses a year. Same in Australia, a new plant, 100 million doses a year or more. Canada, another plant to make another 100 million doses a year. Maryland, of course, in the States, different countries, the whole, the British government has signed a deal with Moderna to produce, as we say, 250 million doses of these vaccines a year. We're committed to buying them as far as I understand it. And yet um, these adverse reactions, and of course you don't get a more serious adverse reaction than this one. Um, than that one. Um I think this programme should be paused until we know much, much more than we know now. But unfortunately, um, corporate and governmental, governmental uh, entities seem to be forging ahead. Um, if there are trials for these new uh, mRNA vaccines that are coming out, I won't be volunteering. big scale, little data, as far as I can see. And then much of the data we do have is not what we'd like it to be. Check out the paper for yourself. All the links are there, full PDF, freely available on that study. Thank you for watching.